Mark chapter 11 and also Hebrews. We've been talking about the subject of faith for some months now. Or not, was it months, weeks? Is it months? Is it already two? 11 weeks. Well, that's okay. <laughs> months. Uh, and I feel like we're, we're getting to the close of this, but I didn't feel like I was quite uh, released and finished for today. So we want to make sure we're done before we go to the next thing. And uh, we have been using as our text Mark 11. So turn there, and if you didn't bring a Bible with you today, hold up your hand and let uh, our ushers get one to you. Use one of ours. Go to Mark 11. Mark 11. The Scripture says in Mark 11, 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. So what should we do? We should have faith in God. That's one reason the big word faith is out there on the front of the church. Right? And people who make fun of faith are just ignorant of scriptural truth. Because it's all in the Word. It's, it's, in, it's here. It's there. I, you can't please God without faith. You can't get saved without faith. You can't overcome uh, without faith. You can't have victory without faith. It goes on and on. Uh, wise people don't make fun of faith. For verily I say to you that whosoever, so who would this work for? Whosoever that would say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, in other words, in his heart, that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Who said this? Can you count on it? Can you live by it? Should you live this way? Are most Christians speaking to their problems? Hmm? Expecting what they say to come to pass? Commanding things that are hindering them to be removed? No. Why? Why not? Well, tradition has replaced the word in so many areas. And we don't need to judge anybody. We just need to examine ourselves constantly that it's not happening with us. Because there's all kind of tradition. Right? There's Pentecostal tradition. And there's already word and faith tradition. There's charismatic tradition. And so you want to examine everything that you think you believe by the word. Where's the scripture? You know? Well, so-and-so said, you know, well, this is what I think. This is what Grandpa said. No, no. Where's the scripture? Where's the verse? Well, here's a verse. You got a problem, even if it's a great big mountain-sized problem. What do you do? You square off and look that thing in the eye, right? And you open your mouth, and you speak to it. This is not prayer. This is not you begging God to move the mountain. This is you speaking to that thing, just like what we did a few minutes ago with these tumors and growths, right? And these cancers. Is that scriptural, what we did? We did. We spoke to them. We commanded them to die and be removed. Is that the end of it, though? What else did he tell you? He didn't just say, speak to it. If just speaking to it was all there was to it, you'd be seeing a lot more results. You've got to speak to it, but then what? Don't doubt in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart, but believe. That what you said will come to pass, and you'll have what you say. So what can mess this thing up? Doubting in your heart can mess it up. So now for these weeks, we've been on this subject, and the title of it is Without a Doubt. Because that's how we want to be. Without a doubt. Without a doubt means it'll work. (laughs) You say it, and it's going to happen. I'm not doubting about it. I'm believing it. 
I'm expecting it. And he said, if you'll say it and not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you said will come to pass, you will have whatever you said. Jesus said it. So we ought to be saying some things. You want some things to happen? You ought to be saying some things. But not just saying it, but not doubting in your heart and believing what you said would come to pass. Now just me telling you that is not enough. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the anointed word, right? The anointing on that word brings faith into your heart. Well, how does faith leaveth? How does faith goeth? (laughs) Well, how does doubt cometh? Not hearing, you know, you're not going to have faith if you don't hear the word. But how does doubt come? How does fear come? See, uh, doubt and fear is a perversion of faith. And so the principles work the same way, only in reverse. That's where all the enemy stuff is. He's not a creator. He is the pervert. Capital T, capital, he is. What is, what is pervert? To, to pervert something, to twist it, to, to, he, you know, actually that's what wicked means. Wicked means twisted. It was good till somebody twisted it up, messed it up. Everything, we've been on this on Friday nights, everything God made is good. Right? Well, if you're missing Friday nights, you're missing out on something. We're getting stirred up around here, as you can tell. But then the enemy come along, he can't, he's not a creator. He's a fallen, defeated angel. And he, uh, you know, he, he's not a creator. All he can do is twist stuff up and pervert it and distort it and mess it up. So that's what he tried to do with faith. Faith comes by hearing. How does doubt come? It comes by hearing the wrong thing, right? How does fear come? So many times people were doing fine until they heard that bad report, right? They were doing fine until they watched that thing on the news. They were doing fine until they heard that. Well, see, something came when they heard. Well, just like that can happen negatively, something can come when you hear the good word, right? You could be in bad shape. You can be in fear. You can be shaken, but hear the right thing and your fears just go and faith comes up and peace comes and joy. Does it matter what you hear? Oh, it does. Does it matter who you sit around and talk to? What y'all talk about? Does it matter what you sit in front of the TV and listen to for hours on end? You know, so many folks are, are hypocritical about the TV. They'll, they'll go to a restaurant and take their family and somebody use foul language at the table next to them and just get irate. I'm not putting up with that. Do you see I have my family here? My wife's here. My daughters are here. Watch your mouth. Make a big deal. Just be rude and ugly. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and, and then, you know, well, I have a right to. That's my righteous indignation. Well, are you a hypocrite, though? Go home, sit down in front of TV, and listen to cussing for four hours straight and not blink an eye. <laughs> not say a word. <laughs> and sit there and go, can you believe they show that on TV? I can't believe they let them talk like that. (laughs) Does it matter what we see and what we hear? Does it matter what kind of church you go to? Hmm? And what you hear? What if people are telling you every other Sunday, it might not be God's will to heal you? Will that affect your faith? That God might get some glory out of you being broke. Huh? That it might be God's will for you to die in a car wreck. You just never know. Huh? If you hear that, will that affect your faith? Yes, it will. 
Yes, it will. What if you hear all the time that God's a good God? Yes. By his stripes, you're healed. Yes. He loves you. Yes. He wants every need met. Yes. He wants you to be rich. Yes. He's your protector. Yes. He's your deliverer. Yes. You can count on him. Yes. What if you hear that all the time? And you talk it and you think it all day and all night. Huh? What did he say? Don't let this book of the law, the word, depart out of your mouth. Right? Meditate on it all night, all day, so that you'll observe to do. Do act on what you saw. Then what will happen? Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. That's the Bible. That's us. That's happening for us. Can you say amen? amen? So say it out loud. I mean, put your hand on this page right here. Say it out loud. I believe in the words of Jesus. I believe in speaking in faith. I believe in speaking in faith. Not doubting in my heart. Not doubting in my heart. I believe it'll come to pass. I believe it'll come to pass. Just, like Jesus said. Just like Jesus said. I'm a faith person. I'm a faith person. Of a faith God. I'm a faith God. I live by faith. I walk by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So we talked about this. What is doubt? I mean, if this is the thing, can mess up us getting results, can prevent us getting what we desire, we need to know about it and not allow it. Doubt, if you notice, the first letters are the same as the word double. D-O-U-B. And it literally means uh, to be of two minds or duo. Duo, two. To be of two minds. And the same word that's translated doubt is in Romans 4 translated stagger. And in James 1 it's translated waver. Same word. So to doubt is to waver, to stagger. What does waver or stagger mean? If I'm staggering, what am I doing? I'm moving in more than one direction. <laughs> right? If I'm wavering, I'm vacillating between, see, more than one thing. It's like Elijah stood on that mountain. He said, how long are you going to doubt? You're halting between two opinions and positions. If God's God, worship him. If Baal is God, worship him. But quit messing around with it. Make up your mind. Pick. <laughs> and then they had a demonstration. Remember that? <laughs> you know, I hope they got video of that. I'd like to watch that when I get to heaven, wouldn't you? I'm sure they do. Something better than that. Uh, and, you know, he, he mocked Baal. And, and, you know, they came out. And whoever's going to answer by fire is the real God. And that's who we're going to worship. And so... They, they called on Baal and they cut themselves and they did all the stuff. And he said, you know, maybe you need to holler louder. I don't think he's hearing you. <laughs> and man, he just ribbed him. He just, he just said, maybe he's asleep. You better yell louder. Maybe he's on a trip. He's gone. <laughs> they, they did that all day long. There was no answer because there is no other God. And a chunk of rock never answered a prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right? Amen. And then he called on the living God. And he answered by fire and licked up all the water and all the sacrifice. And then, uh, and then so the prophet said, all right, who's God? And they said, oh, the Lord, he's God. They all fell. There were no more wavering. Is Baal God? I don't know. He might be. See, we live in an intellectual society. And people, you know, thousands upon thousands going through the universities and, and all the great intellect so-called, you know, if you listen to it, so much of it has to do with a myriad of opinions and positions. Well, we see merit in this, but also this is a valid position and opinion, and this could be. And then so you got even Christians trying to tell you there are many ways to God. Well, the Bible says there's only one, right? No, 
Well, y'all are just narrow-minded. Yeah, and saved. (laughs) There is a broad way that that leads where? To destruction. No, the, the more in God you get, the simpler everything becomes. Well, you just don't understand, Brother Keith. I'm a complicated person. That means you're a confused person. <laughs> means you don't, you either don't know what's right or you haven't decided to agree with what you know is right. Hmm? You go into the restaurant and they say, all right, we got beans and cornbread today and that's it. Is it confusing what we're gonna eat today? <laughs> no. <laughs> we, <laughs> beans and cornbread, that's it, Right? And you, you're not going to be tormented with indecision for half a day. That's it. And when you've heard from God, there is nothing else to consider. Yes. Yes. There are many voices in the world. They're all saying something. But there's only one that counts. Yes. What the Lord is saying. Yes. And once you've heard from Him, you should no longer entertain anything else. Yes. Right? And so that's what this doubt is about. Doubt is about considering things you ought not be thinking about. Peter, you know, walked on the water to go to Jesus. A miracle is transpiring. And then he began to look at the wind and the waves. He was just considering Jesus and what he said, come. Now he began to consider this and he began to waver and he began to sink. And even though something can be very distracting to you and alarming to you, is it possible for you to turn your face to the wall and refuse to see anything else except the Lord? Is it possible in the midst of a tough situation to not just say, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. None of these things move me. I've heard from the Lord. And that's it. Right? And if you're not like that, you're not in faith. You can't be entertaining all these myriad of other positions and thoughts and ideas. If you're unsettled, it's because you're undecided. If you're confused, it's because you're considering something you should not be. Remember Abram? He didn't stagger in faith, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform what the Bible says. He considered not his own body. It was there. It was talking to him every day. Every day when he looked in the mirror, it's saying, hey, you are old man. You're too old for this. He, every time he looked at his wife, you know, she's older. She couldn't conceive when she was 20. Things are talking to him. And things will talk to you in this life. That pile of bills will talk to you. Come on, have you heard it? That pile of bills will say, hey, you, you're never going to pay this. Where are you going to get this money? Your symptoms will talk to you, but you have to say, shut up, shut up, shut up. The Lord told me that he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. That's all I, you got to pick. You have to pick to listen to one and not listen to the other. Listen to the instructions for being healed. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Huh? Well, now, how many understand you can't listen to the other thing? Now, I hope you don't misunderstand around here. We thank God for good doctors. We do. A lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for good doctors and good nurses and good medical folks. But they're not the healer. Right? And you don't want to just put your life in the hands of any man. That was too weak. Do not ever just put your life into the hands of any preacher or any lawyer or any doctor or anybody. No reason I tell you that because there are a lot of preachers, there's a lot of lawyers, there are a lot of doctors that'll try to get you to do it. You don't know, I know, just shut up and do what I say. Don't do it. Did you hear me? Hear from God. Have faith. Right? A lot of people don't want to do that because if something goes wrong, they want to blame somebody. But if you listen to somebody, they give you bad counsel and it messes up your life, it's your fault. I'm going to say that again real slow. (laughs) 
If somebody gives you bad advice, gives you bad counsel, I don't care who they're supposed to be and how important they're supposed to be. They give you bad counsel and it messes up your life. Whose fault is it? It's your fault for listening to it and doing it. Because you got the Holy Ghost. You have access to God in prayer. You have a Bible. You could have heard from the Lord. Right? But a lot of people are too lazy. They don't want to do that. You just, you just tell me what to do. You just decide and save me having to pray and find out. And then, of course, if it goes wrong, I can blame you too. <laughs> well, it's still your fault. Right? It is. Be responsible. Take responsibility for your own life and your decisions. And then you'll come out so much better. Uh, we're in uh, Mark. Go with me over to the Hebrews chapter. I was telling you about Hebrews chapter uh, 3. I don't plan to go a whole lot longer, but uh, I do plan to go till I get through. Amen. Right? What well, should I? We've had some extra things this morning, but that's okay. Well, it's good to have something going on. Isn't it? We're going to have a lot of testimonies about healing from this morning. You watch and see. We'll have a lot of testimonies. Thanks be unto God. We give him all the glory, all the credit. Isn't it good to have a healer? Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. In Hebrews 10, you were, hold your place in three because we are going there. But uh, read this first. Hebrews 10, you believing with me? Yes. You shouldn't just be believing with me to get through quick. You should be believing with me to get, to get the job done. <laughs> Hebrews 10. <laughs> yeah, I'm believing with you, Brother Keenan. <laughs> what does that mean? Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. And let us hold fast the profession or confession, as some say, of our faith, what? Without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. We've talked about this already. We talked about the faithful part some last week. And man, that's a, you can't meditate on that too much. The reason Sarah received, because she judged God faithful. But we are to hold fast. Keep that in mind. Hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering. And go back now to the third chapter. Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3 and 14. Hebrews 3.14 says, we are made partakers of Christ if, that's a qualifying word, if we what? Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. It's not enough just to believe God like a house of fire for three days and quit, right? You got to believe God how long? Well, what does the scripture say? How long? To the, to the end. To the end of what? Well, whatever, whatever it is you're believing God about, believe God to the end of it. Right? Yes. Well, I've been standing, Brother Keith, for, for two years. and Well, are you to the end of it? Have you seen it? Is it done? Well, then you need to keep standing. Stay after it. Now, see, that goes right along with a holding fast your confession. That's a part of holding the beginning of your confidence. If your confidence is there, then your words are going to be there. 
You're going to be, your words of confidence and faith are going to be just like they were when you first started out. If it was based on the word, it should be the same because that sure reads the same. Right? If you were saying I'm healed, the Bible still says you are. Right? So it's not going to change. You don't change. And he went on to say, we're made partakers if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. And uh, in verse, skip on down to chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Everybody say rest. rest. For unto us was the gospel, the good news preached or proclaimed, as well as to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith, in them that heard it. Now there's a whole message there. Is it possible for two people to sit side by side, hear exactly the same thing, one be immeasurably, uh, without measure blessed, and the other one be bored? One get all kind of benefit, both then and years to come out of what they heard, the other get no benefit. And they heard the same thing. What would be the difference? One mixed faith with what they heard. The other one did not. It's just like chemistry. You got elements that separated are, uh, what's the word, inert. But you mix them together and you'll get something. Right? I mean, in this bottle, you can move it around, you can slush it, you can, you know, you can pour it out, nothing. This other one, you can move it around, you can throw it out, you can put a match in it, nothing. But don't mix two drops of them. (laughs) Right? And I'm telling you, the devil is scared of this. He's scared you're going to mix them. (laughs) Right? And so you got people talking about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. And you got some people talk about faith, but no word. Right? Word but no faith, faith but no word. Faith without works is dead, Amen. inert. Oh, but wow. When you can find a place where you can get some real word and some real faith, whoo, watch out, watch out. <laughs> we'll have some explosion around here. Some healing explosions and prosperity explosions. and deli- What are you talking about? God's power manifesting and things getting done. (laughs) The Lord gave me a course along that line years and years ago. Mix faith with the power and the answer will come. Mix faith with the power and the work will be done. In a bad situation, it's a real combination. Mix them today and blow the devil away. (laughs) <laughs> so, mix them today. <laughs> Verse 3. For we which have believed, what happens to us? We enter into rest. How can we tell if we're doubting? If we're doubting, we're wavering. If we're and we're staggering. If we're doing that, we're unsettled. We are we're vexed because of not picking the right thing to get settled on. We don't have peace. When Peter began to look at the wind and the waves, was he resting anymore? No, he's alarmed. He's scared. He's unsettled. Now he's he's trying to look at Jesus and he's looking at the wind and the way. Can you see what's happening to him? Evidence that he is duo-wing. He is being of two minds. He's wavering. He's doubting. He starts going down. But when you're in faith, what happens? We which believe, what happens to us? We enter into. Can you be in rest even though there's a storm raging round about you? Peter, must, he must have had that in the beginning of stepping out. 
What, what was it like? I mean, the wind is howling, the, the salt water spraying him in the face, the, the waves are kicking up, the boat's filled with water. All this is going on, but I believe when he first stepped out of there, all he can see is Jesus, and all he can hear is that word come, and it's like he's in a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> it's all going on, but it's like he's in a safe place. He's in another place. Is it possible to live in the same geographical location but live in a different world? Yes. It is. Because you don't just live out here. You live in your mind, in your spirit. You live in your awareness. And we're to live in God. Our life is in Him. Our awareness and reality is to be in Him. Can you say amen? Amen. And when you are in faith in an area, you enter into that place underneath the everlasting arms in the secret place of the Most High, and you get into a place of rest. It might be in the middle of the emergency room at the hospital. It might be in the middle of a a, a crime that somebody's trying to commit. But in the middle of it, when you get in faith, everything else is subdued. (laughs) I've experienced this a few times in a, in a pronounced way in, in our own, my own life and Phyllis in my life. Some situations where we were in, you know, you would think grave danger, but I mean all at once. I, we just made a decision, you know. It ain't time to get scared. It ain't time to scream. It ain't time to fall apart. It's time to believe God, right? You know, one thing that'll help you tremendously is just to lose all fear of death. So what, well, what if you die? What if you die? Well, what if you did? <laughs> People think dying's the worst thing that could happen to you. For a child of God? What's dying? You're out of here. <laughs> but you enter into, somebody said out loud, rest, rest, rest. Verse 6. Seeing therefore it remains that some must enter in and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. What will keep you out of that place of rest? Unbelief. Unbelief. Doubt. Verse 9. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. Now just stop right there. In any situation in your life is there a rest? available to you. Hmm? Maybe somebody's pitching a fit. Maybe somebody, all they want to do is fight. Maybe somebody's trying to hurt you and take advantage of you. Maybe you've got some terrible, bad reports. Do you have to come apart? Do, wh- why would you come apart? Hmm? Because you quit looking at God and you start looking at this. You start looking at, listening to this report. You start looking at what's in front of your eyes. And when you do it, it starts shaking you. And at first you're doing this between God and that. And then if you do it long enough, you'll probably just forget God and look at this. And you'll be full of fear. You'll be full of doubt. But you can make a decision. When it first starts, you can make a decision and say, I don't care. I don't care. God is here. He'll take care of me. I'm, I'm coming through this. And you can focus on him. And there is that rest, that peace that passes understanding, keeping your heart, keeping your mind, comforting you, that that anchor to your soul that we talked about, your soul doesn't have to be up and down and all over the place. It can be anchored, locked in the everlasting rock of ages. (laughs) Can you say amen? Amen. You think, well, Brother Keith, I just don't know if I'm that spiritual. Forget about all that. Just do one simple thing. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher. The what? What what does finish mean? We're going to finish this thing, right? He was with us when we started. He's with us right now. He'll be with us when we cross the line. That means we're going to finish. The devil will tell you, no, you ain't going to make it. You say, no, he's the author and the... That means I'm going to finish. 
I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. There remains a rest to the people of God. He that entered into his rest, he ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You, you're not trying to make it happen. You're not straining. You're not taking the pressure of it. You're not taking the care of it. You're counting on him. You're relying on him. You're leaning on him. You're resting on him. And he went on to say, for the word of God. It's alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it pierces even to the dividing asunder of your soul and spirit. Now, this, this is how you get in that rest. This is how you stay in that rest. Your, your soul is trying to go bananas on you and zonkers on you. But if you put that word in there, that word will come through and pierce between that junk. And it'll anchor your soul. And even though you may have been just flighty in times past, people will look at you and marvel and go, wow, did you see when they told them that? They didn't even flinch. <laughs> look at them. And then some people whisper and go, well, it's so bad, they've lost their mind. They just, they've, <laughs> they flipped. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Well, they ain't got enough sense to realize what serious trouble they're in. Nope. Nope, they just don't know how big your God is. How faithful his word is. Oh, hallelujah. How do you keep from wavering? How do you keep from doubting? Messing up what you prayed? Messing up what you said? Hindering the will of God from coming to pass in your life? You've picked that one thing that will not be taken away from you. That, that one word, that one voice that counts. And you no longer consider anything else. And as you keep, you know, meditate upon him, he keeps you in perfect peace while your mind is stayed on him. Oh, come on. And you enter into rest. And then even though people are crying and, and coming apart round about you, you're in another place. You might be five inches from them, but you're in another place. Oh, come on, you're in another place. You're in the place of grace. You're in the place of peace. You're in the place of faith. You're in the place of rest. We trust this message has ministered to you. If you plan to be in the Branson area, please visit us at Faith Life Church, located at 3220 Falls Parkway, off of Highway 165. Services are Friday nights at 7.30 and Sunday mornings at 10. You can also watch our services online at flcbranson.org. For more information, please call us at 417-334-9233.